Utah. We have launch up. Uh, are there regulations around bartering? Because I know there are professional services bartering organizations and handle tax implications and things of that nature. Sure, yeah, we have a link to the tax code. It's pretty interesting. If it's not commercial, it's not taxed. And if it's commercial, if it's in kind, you don't have to pay tax. But most of the time, you can uh, count as revenue and expense it out. But th this is what's so great, because uh, David Bateman talked about what's going on with the government. And that's why we love this, because it's so free market friendly. You know, like you can just trade. And the government can't really regulate it, per se. So I know like we have a lot of constitutionalists on there that love this. But yeah, you should pay your taxes, I understand that. But it's really free market friendly. And, that, you know, and so I don't know where I'm going with that, but I don't want to throw, I want to throw my pitch in that I'm all for free market economics. So, so how are you different slash better than way, trade away and barter quest? Do the exact same thing. They match you up based on wants and needs. Sure. Uh, they pretend to. Uh, they're... Uh, their model's a little bit different. Our, I think our technology is a little bit better of how we can bring that to them. Uh, we also have ways, so you can be very specific, like if you want a Sony plasma number this, you never get bugged by us unless that comes up, and it can be open. And it's way easier just to click through and accept and deny. Uh, there's some other, you know, I feel like a lot of those guys are like economics people, and I am too, I love that, but they're not really traders. So, you know, we have like a help blog that helps people like through, like what are you gonna experience when you make that first trade? Are you gonna feel like you ripped them off? And, and so we, we kind of try to bring that aspect in as well. Hope that answered your question. But we love them, though. We're not for, you know, we're not trying to say don't use Craigslist, don't use KSL. I use them, too. And this is just another medium that we can hope to make better to make it more fun to trade. So one of the things that, that stood out to me was the, the $5. Because that seems like it would preclude trading things like paper clips. So how did you choose $5, and do you think that's optimal? And what, what kind of uh, strategy do you have to, to find the perfect revenue strategy if that's not it sure we thought five bucks might be a good because uh, you know people charge commissions 10 percent commission for this and we wanted the people to focus on the trade more than what they have to pay us so that's something we've seen because there's like uh, personnel based places that charge you a 12 percent commission and everything on whatever you're trading how can we regulate what people are trading and their value so we thought flat fee this way you know if you're going to trade your car for something else you don't actually think oh crap i'm going to lose five bucks you think maybe this trade is worth five bucks also, we want it to be such a good experience. We wanted to kind of keep the low-end crap off, I guess, and try to promote the better things. So, uh, yeah, so we don't want necessarily a guy trading a, putting a paper clip on there, but maybe he's, it's worth it to him because maybe he can trade for something and it's worth paying five bucks for. Hey, um, do you guys assume any accountability for deals that go bad, and how are you trying to mitigate that from happening as far as like condition differences or just an expectation sure uh, we we uh, plead the e-harmony on this one like we'll guarantee a match but we're not going to guarantee your marriage to work so we think <laughs> you know like we can't we don't have a PayPal like eBay has where they can fully regulate you to death on things you can and can't do but the system has worked like there's another one called swap tree where it's basically for books CDs video games and this is all in like the honor system, and they just ship stuff back and forth, and it, it's actually doing really well, like they're growing really well. So, I mean, trust is one of the fundamental things of a free market. It sucks that we can't trust anybody, but yeah, we're just saying that we're just a matchmaking type system. I think it's actually a really cool concept. It takes me back to uh, ninth grade when I traded a bottle of Polo Cologne for a Willie Mays baseball card. I still have it, so. <laughs> yeah, my first one was rollerblades for a Lego, like, Star Wars set. Lego yeah, set. it wasn't his rookie card, but it was still, yeah. still, I'll have to dig it up. Um, I'm just wondering how much your, if you guys have done any studies or determine what your average customer is worth to you guys that comes to your site and registers. Sure, I think we're about a dollar per acquisition. Some things are a little bit cheaper, some are a little bit more. And like I said, we've only been up to beta testing for a few hundred. This is actually just our, like, relaunch with the real thing, more say, and some of the things we were like pushing just to get this done. So like our Facebook connections and all that are, are halfway implemented, but hopefully there'll be kind of fun li lifelines. Like if there's a trade you don't know if you want to make, you can post it on your Facebook and have your friends vote on it if you should trade it or not. Or I don't, It's really exciting because I do trades and I post it on my stuff and my friends are always like, dude, how did you do that? And yeah, 
and once you make your first trade, you like get very addicted to it. It's it's just, you know, it's like you take the green pill from Matrix. You're like introduced to this whole other new world that you never really knew existed, and it's really fun. I mean, Matrix sucks, but you know, this is really fun. When it comes to the hearts and minds of your target audience, uh, Dave, to actually figure that out, and is it, are you using that to leverage your position in the marketplace? You know, I, I feel like our core, I hope I'm answering this, our core competency is that we just facilitate trades. Yes, I hope that it helps this unemployed coder get some food on his table and the stay-at-home mom to contribute. You know, we really hope for all that stuff, and it is doing that, but I feel like our core competency is we just facilitate the trade and we want to be the best at that. Sorry, did I answer that? Okay. Okay, so along those same lines, hey, how much thinking or research have you done um, regarding whether or not the U.S. is your, your most profitable area to be, to be operating in? Sure, it may not be, you know, and, and we're starting here, and, and I don't even know if Utah is the right place because, you know, some people are like, yeah, it's really good because people are really frugal there, but maybe it's really bad because people are frugal here, you know, maybe there's another market. You know, if you go to like Craigslist, Orange County, and type in their barter and trade, but if you just type in trade in the search, it's just crazy amounts of stuff on there, so, you know, we're just trying to start somewhere and go from there. Thanks, guys.